All right, at this point, I'm up in the ear, working on the black hairs, feathering them down. I've torn away the outer uh, paper salvie so that I could see the edges as I was stitching, because sometimes it's hard to see. Of course, my vision isn't all that anyways to begin with. Um, you know, you can wing it a little bit here because there's pretty much uh, nothing that you can't undo. I had a little bit of wrestling here with my bigger dog's nose. So what I did is I printed out, number one, all these colors are wrong. I printed out a photo with correct color uh, to try to figure out exactly how to clarify her nose. So I have a good idea here. Now when I get a lighter gray in here, it's going to look more realistic. But you have to start somewhere. So, uh, you know, not everything's totally clear. And I'm trying to pick the darkest color here for black um, to feather down into the ear. So you can see a lot of the black is done. Head, eyes, nose, um, side of the face, the mouth, most of the coat, uh, my little dog's eyes, face, nose, little heart mark, tip of the tail. She doesn't have a lot of black in her coat. Um, I still have to do um, here and I still have to feather the ears better. And then I can go on to another color which is going to be um, not much different than the black. I'm going to work from um, dark to light. So I'm going to go to the deepest gray that I've got next. I'm not sure which one that is yet. I'm going to have to hold them up in uh, this lighting that I have here. Um, apparently this is the darkest gray I have, but if you ask me, that's black. Um, I'm working under um, daylight spectrum lights here as well as my um, Janome LED lights to try to give um, the truest color under daylight. This is um, this photo was taken in this light in this room and this is my favorite working light which is daylight spectrum. You might want to keep in mind that you want to use your threads or compare colors under consistent lighting because any one shade is going to look different under different spectrum of lights. And I would never work under, you know, um, uh, incandescent lights unless you like that yellow look you get in your camera when you take pictures indoors. Um, I replace most of my lights with daylight spectrum. Um, those are fluorescents over there in the tubes. These are LED daylight spectrum. And I have some that are 6500K, not just the 5000K spectrum. Um, the 6500 spectrum is an even brighter daylight. But this is a good medium. 5000 is a good medium. So, like I said, that's why there's no universal, interchangeable thread color chart from one brand to another. I learned. Because it depends what spectrum of light the colors are being compared under. So, you know, you will, you might find some charts that tell you, you know, like Madeira to Isochord or Madeira um, to Sulky, and it will give you an exchange. But on that chart, it will also tell you the spectrum of light that was used to compare those colors and match them. The interesting thing that I noted, if I'm going to get into this really highly technical color matching art of thread painting, is when I um, bought my um, kit to um, calibrate my monitor, my iMac, and my Canon printer, I got a Color Monkey. The great thing about Color Monkey is it not only perfectly display, uh, calibrates your display so that you can see shadows and highlights in perfect, you can edit photos, and they will be true to the printing but it also can create ICC profiles for printing on any paper. 
so I can even print on Epson paper that I've calibrated with my printer and I can get perfect color matching uh, if I make the ICC profiles. Not only that, but I can um, I can use this um, colorometer, color, I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, it will also um, give me a reading of anything I put underneath it, whether it be threads, a spool of thread, uh, a swatch of thread, and on the top is an ambient light meter. It's going to tell me, you know, exactly what my spectrum of light in, is in the room that I'm reading whatever um, under. So I can do my color matching using this meter or like many people do, you can do your color matching by eye. But keep in mind the light source that you're under is the definitive factor uh, on how you're going to match those colors. Because if you take those two threads under a different spectrum of light, blue light, you know, red light, yellow light, or daylight, they're going to look like they perhaps don't match anymore. So keep in mind where your item is going to be displayed for how you match your colors. I've gone so far as to create an Excel sheet and, you know, uh, put 5,000K in one, one column, um, 6,500K in another column, and put how my colors match. Um, as I match them and I started to use the color monkey because it gives me the RGB values and the Pantone values and uh, Then I can make accurate um, Conversions without having to you know ogle them by eye and struggle with uh, comparisons in Very close color matching because some of them, you know, you can't tell the difference unless you really um, have a good look at them, perhaps with one of those little portable loops. Um, and, um, you know, some of them you might not even be able to distinguish the difference. Another good thing to note is I've blocked all the daylight out of this room except for the top because I'm relying strictly on my lighting in the room for all of my color matching work. So the biggest issue with this project is color matching and patience because it takes an awful lot to fill all that in without having an applique or fabric underneath and uh, the true test will be when I dissolve all this salvy paper and the stitching alone remains and of course I'm not going to remove it until there's enough thread down where I don't have to guess what color goes where next because all of this is not yet thread painted just the black and a little bit of the the gold in, in the eyes is done so far. I decided to work from dark to light so I ceased on the gold color. So I'm going to go black, gray, lighter gray, lighter gray yet, you know, then I'm going to go um, perhaps into my oranges and tans um, and then into my taupes because there's a lot of taupe shadowing in little Bitsy's coat here. She has a lot of skin color coming through so you know I'm going to have to take it um, line by line and decide what colors next. So I'm just guessing where these the coloring the shadowing in the ears is going first here and then I'm going to put layers and layers of thread on top so if something doesn't look quite right I'm just going to put stitching on top of it until it looks right. Um, tricky things are like the eye shading um, around the nose here um, with their little whiskers. Um, I'm finding the nose is a little tricky to distinguish as well as the eyes because there's a lot of um, shadow and highlight in the eyes, reflection. And, you know I can take a lot of that out but, but it creates some interesting color in there. There's even some purple in there and I'd like to leave some purple in. I, I mean you know, I'll see how many colors it is in the end, but I have a feeling it's, you know, it's going to grow. I'm starting to really enjoy working slow on this. And if I work slow, I don't overstitch areas and I don't uh, miss the gaps because you have to go over it like maybe six, eight times, line upon line upon line, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 
and then I kind of work my way over to an area then I work my way back you know sometimes I lift the needle up and just move everything over without cutting any threads because I could snip those later uh, just to move to a new area so uh, this is how it's going I love how it's creating depth you know and I'm probably going to want to put this under glass when I'm done although as you can see it's very large and um, I don't know too many people that take on such a large first project but I didn't realize it was going to be um, uh, this much work in hindsight you know I should have put you know black fabric underneath here and then uh, done some fancy thread stitching on top to give the illusion of the flow of the fur and that would save an awful lot of thread because now I have to fill in every you know every white spot with thread now and um, the whole process has gotten easier with practice because I'm no longer getting thread fraying and breaking the thread fraying and breaking was coming um, from my movement of the piece as I was stitching and I'm getting smoother and it's getting more intuitive so it, it's going rather well but I'm running out of um, hard drive space here and I'm gonna have to shut the camera off but I just wanted to um, you know give you a closer view of of the stitching see I don't know how well that's gonna come out translated uh, in the video whether you're going to be able to see any any um, definition in the stitch work because um, if there's too much contrast the camera is not going to allow you to see it and part of this work is still under the needle so I can't pull it out I um, indulged myself in another 27 spools of thread on the weekend of course um, I decided that I needed more colors to choose.